So if you're ever hunting with a partner, which most of the times we are, and it's that critical moment when the game is out in front of you and you're ready to shoot, and it's really important that the communication between the shooter and the spotter is on point. You on him, Dad? I'm on him, yeah. So I spend a lot of time out in the field, obviously, and hunting with other guys, and I make it very clear before we go and shoot some of the commands that we're gonna use and really try to talk the talk about the scenario before it actually comes. And that's very important. So once you, when it is go time, everyone's is gonna be excited. You know, the, the adrenaline is pumping and you know, auditory exclusion happens. Okay, Carl, Carl, 7.5. And that's where good communication and the ability to calm down and just take it slow is so important. So often, if I'm not the shooter and I'm the spotter, it's clear communication about what animal it is that's out there that we're taking. Say we're sheep hunting and there's a band of rams, you have to be very clear about which one that it is. And then once that shooter knows, okay, that's the animal I'm taking, you have to have the ability to be able to call off the shot as animals move around. Oftentimes, you know, you'll have caribou or moose or sheep moving around before you're gonna take that shot. And often when the guy is focused or gal is focused on the animal they wanna take, it's easy not to see some of the peripheral animals that could become, you know, could become a target if they walk behind the, uh, the one you're wanting to shoot. So. It's super important that you actually have that communication and the spotter is very clear and says no shot. And that's what I use when I'm spotting for someone. If I see a caribou say move, a cow caribou move behind the bull that we're trying to kill and it's very clear, no shot. And then sometimes it's even putting the hand on the person to make sure that they know because you know, you got your ear ear protection on and you have to be sure that the communication is there to literally sometimes pull a guy off the scope or make sure that they know. I'm gonna shoot, give me a range. Jason, there's two bulls. Okay. Okay. I'll hold tight. Some of the other important points is that that auditory exclusion is a real thing. And as the adrenaline moves, like you just oftentimes people can just stop hearing what's going on. So that's one thing the spotter has to recognize what's happening and be very clear and make sure that uh, a poor shot or a shot doesn't happen when it, sh when it shouldn't. And then when the shot goes off, obviously a lot of times a guy gets pulled off the, off the game and has to find it again and in order to do a follow-up shot. Again, I'm trying to find him. Down. No, he's not. One more. Where the fuck is he? To the left. 10 feet to the left of where you shot him. And that's where it's also, again, very important for that spotter to continuously be on that animal and be aware of all the surroundings and help the shooter get on to, back onto target and take that follow up shot if it's necessary. Um, so, calling the shot. You know, sometimes windy conditions, sometimes shots get missed, and that spotter, his role is to, you know, is to try to make sure that he knows where that shot went, whether it was left or right, high or low, and be able to help the shooter get back on target and compensate for that situation. Especially if we're talking about wind. The spotter's job is to call the wind. If you're, you know, if you're a good, good team and you're working together, then the spotter can help call that wind and, um, and be looking for wind through the spotting scope as it goes. Obviously, you wanna have that kind of dialed in long before the shot goes off. The spotter is there to, to supplement the, the hunter, or the shooter, and to be able to help them make good decisions along the way. And that is definitely one of them. Once, if a shot is missed or if it's hit, the animal is hit not in an ideal spot, they can help make that correction for the follow-up shot. 14.7. Often, if I'm spotting, I've got the range finder and I'll be calling out the ranges as the animal moves, whether it's closer or f further away. I'll be telling the, the shooter to dial, dial it in, you know, one way or the other. 
Um, sometimes, if it's easier for me, I will just, or, and the shooter, I'll just range it, get the number, and I'll dial it in for them. You know, put the, put the scope back down, pull it up, dial it in, put it down, and then they're on and haven't even had to take their eye off of off the target basically. So that's really great teamwork out there, which is, you know, we're all out here hunting with people and we wanna make the most of every opportunity that's available. And by working as a team and communicating really well, it makes life so much easier and often more successful. So one of the times where looking back where as a spotter, I failed my shooter, which actually was Carl, in, uh, in a situation with, on a sheep hunt. And in this particular situation, we had a great ram standing right in front of us, you know, 100 yards away, I believe it was. And I told Carl to shoot and he, uh, he, he didn't hear me. It was a situation of possibly auditory exclusion, just everyone was really excited and I'm saying shoot shoot and what i should have done is recognized that carl wasn't hearing me and i should have you know put my hand on him and communicated like take the shot and then he would have easily just got down taken the shot and would have would have got that ram but instead because he never heard me um that ram ended up walking away and we were both kind of looking at each other like so that was just a situation where it was lack of communication and it had we had we communicated better and I recognized what was going on with Carl, then we would have had the ram at that time. Instead, we had to uh, work a little bit harder. We ended up getting it later, but, uh, but that is a situation that can easily happen out there. So just be aware of it and your job as the, as the shooting companion and as the spotter is to really, you're part of the team. You're part of the, of the actual shot. And if you act like that and you are proactive and you're there to help and you're ma helping make decisions, it's far more successful and it's more exciting for everybody. So what I would suggest next time, if, you're, if you aren't the shooter and you are the spotter or the hunting companion that is gonna be there, play a very active role and try to help out during those situations by identifying what's going on, having a more situational awareness about what's going on around that shooter and what they're dealing with and really helping out and call the shot. Just take the opportunity to look at it like this is my role in this critical moment and how I perform will really benefit the whole team and make it a much more successful hunt.